Welcome back gang. Let's see if we can get through uh, two more here in this video. You can see in question one that we ignored calculate percent ionization. Again, that is the concept here that we are ignoring. And so percent ionization is gone here as well. Question number two is exactly the same as number one. So it just gives us another chance to kind of process it. You can see that I've given the answer uh, for this one as well. What you might want to do is pause the video, try it out, see if you can come up with it. And uh, from there, match the correct answer. If it goes well, awesome. If it doesn't, take a look at uh, the remainder of the solution as we finish this video. Uh, we'll take a look at number three. It's a nice uh, change of pace. No ice table is uh, needed for that one because of this keyword here that we're given equilibrium concentrations rather than <clears throat> um, initial concentrations. So let's do those and see if we can't get through it. So boric acid is one of our entities here. And so we've got H3, BO3. Now this one isn't on your uh, data sheet, unfortunately, but it is a weak acid. And the other entity we have would be the water we are trying to dissolve it within. I know that water is potentially an acid or a base. And again, this question will have to be adjusted as I look at it. Boric acid as a weak acid is only potentially an acid if we did include it on this table. All right, so those are our choices. And so for our simple acid solutions, the strong acid and strong base determination is actually quite simple. The entities are limited here. So now we get to take a look at our proton transfer. That's liquid uh, in equilibrium. And so if Boric acid is our acid. It gives up its proton to water. And so we get the dihydrogen borate ion. And we get that much needed hydronium to figure out acid strength. We can again develop an ice table here. Okay, and we were told in the question, if you look back at it, that you have a 0.1 molar hydrogen borate or boric acid solution. And we would assume nothing before you drop that acid into the solution. We do get to figure out the equilibrium concentration of hydronium because we were told that the pH is equal to 5.16. All right, so with the pH being equal to 5.16, we can figure out that hydronium ion concentration. It is just 10 raised to the negative pH, which is equal to 10 raised to the negative 5.16. And so that equals a concentration for us of 6.92 times 10 to the negative 6 moles per liter. So that gets to go back up here. Now I'm only writing down 6.92. All right, there should likely be extra digits there. This is a precursory step, so please don't round at this point here uh, if you want to maintain an accurate answer for your quiz questions. We now get to learn that hydronium increased by this very small amount in moles per liter. Water again cancels out. You can see that one-to-one -one ratio throughout your Bronsted-Lowry acid-base uh, equilibrium. Again, this is because in this theory, it is a single proton transfer, so you're only changing things by one, and it leads us to nice simplified ratios. So the increases and decreases are easily predictable throughout And we get our equilibrium concentrations. Now, when you do this one here, 0 0.10 minus 6.92 times 10 to the negative 6 is like 0 0.09999999999, which is essentially 0 0.10. All right. If the change 
is on an order of magnitude of a thousand times smaller than your original concentration, oftentimes what we'll do in a lot of these problems is we'll just ignore that change. Because how different is 0 0.099999 to 0 0.10? And it's pretty much insignificantly, dif uh, dif pardon me, insignificantly different. Or if you look at it, there's an order of magnitude here when we take negative one and negative six of about this being one ten thousandth of the original concentration. All right, so that's the reason I'm writing 0 0.10. If you didn't like that and wrote the 0 0.9999999 value, you're going to get the same answer in the end. Okay, so I've done this. Now all I have to do is come up with our Ka since we have all of our equilibrium concentrations. And so Ka in this case, very similar to the other one, is just your products. and their concentrations over the reactant of the original boric acid. Everything raised to the power of 1, and so we get 6.92 times 10 to the negative 6. I'll show it this way this time, 6.92 times 10 to the negative 6, all over 0 0.10, or if you really must do it, the 0 0.099999 value, but regardless, when we get our final answer and round it to our two sig dig limit because of two sig digs on pH and two sig digs on concentration, all right, we will end up getting something that says 4.788 times 10 to the negative 10, but there's my two digits. This rounds up, and so my Ka value is 4.8 times 10 to the negative 10, or in other words, boric acid is a very weak, weak acid. Okay? There you go. That's example number two. I will put example number three into uh, the next video.